Good morning. Happy Wednesday morning. I have my mother here, Bonnie White. <laughs> and we have our Facebook show that we're, we're starting. And uh, the blog talk show will be starting soon. So if you want to tune in on my Facebook page, it's Willow White Medium every Wednesday at 10 a.m. And you can view things there, view the archive videos of, of uh, prior shows as well, because I, I typically have a, a guest One every week. And uh, I wanted to show everyone the flowers that are behind us. Those come from Mom's garden. That's right. <laughs> and uh, They smell good. They do. They do smell good. So we've got the, these are the narcissus. Narcissus, I think. And then these are are these jonquils? I think so. They're kinda like daffodils, only they're they're white. They're white? Yeah. Yeah. So I must have gotten a batch of those and planted them. Yeah. You know, the white ones. And the spring flowers are coming out, <clears throat> so you can see tulips around Lily Dale, mm -hmm. not just the crocus. Hopefully we'll still have them after the squirrels notice them. I know. They've been they get them right when they're ready. They, they they snag things and then once we start playing in the veg in our vegetable garden they start to snag things out of that as well. <laughs> right. so the squirrels are well fed here. <clears throat> just in case anyone's in doubt. They're very, very well fed. You see them in the bird feeders you all the time. Go live in five <laughs> That's true. Three, two, Happy Wednesday, everyone. You're tuning in to Wednesdays with Willa, and I am your host, Willa White. I'm a registered medium here at the Lilydale Assembly, which is the world's largest center for the religion of spiritualism. And on my show every week, I typically have a special guest, and we have a spiritual topic that we discuss and chat with you uh, on air about. And it's an opportunity for you to kind of see a, a range of talents and a range of spiritual discussion uh, about spiritualism, about mediumship, uh, about spiritual things, faith and family. So you're welcome to tune in every week, Wednesday at 10 a.m. here on my Facebook page, which is Willow White Medium. You can also, uh, if you just want to listen only, uh, through the blogtalkradio.com site. So you go to blogtalkradio.com slash Lilydale Radio. And there are four Lilydale Radio shows that run every week. So you can tune into those that have different uh, hosts that are registered mediums here in Lilydale. And uh, thank you for tuning in today to Wednesdays with Willa. Uh, if anyone wants to call in uh, to take part in our topic today, which will be the energy signature of spirit, you're welcome to call in. The number is 818-739-8818. And as my special guest today, I have my mother. Here I am. <laughs> welcome back to the show, Mom. Thank you. And welcome Thank back to Lilydale. Thank you. I'm here. <laughs> yes, it's good. My mother is Bonnie White. She is a registered Lilydale medium as well as being a spirit artist. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're a professional artist in your own right. Yes. You've... Before I was born, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> she, uh, she her artistic talent is is well known, and then you've been able to utilize that in with mediumship as well. That's and right. Bring through spirit. That's art. right. Yeah, spirit uses whatever talents we have. True, the, especially the ones we've made a special point to develop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, so that it's wonderful. To be a spiritualist and be able to use your talents. Yes, the various aspects of self. Yes. And it's wonderful what happens on a page with spirit art, with, with your art in particular, because um, people's faces emerge, those that have yes. passed over, um, pets as mm -hmm. well, animals will show up mm -hmm. on the page. And I, you know, for those of you who aren't familiar with 
my mother's technique with this, she starts with charcoal and and with her eyes closed and things start to come out onto the page and then she's able to bring them more to the forefront uh, during a mediumship session and people confirm that's my mother or no. that's my my son who passed or you know whoever it that's may be. my sister what's she doing here <laughs> <laughs> you know, you never know what they're gonna say. Yeah. So it's, you know? it's very special to have that, <clears throat> right? That visual representation That's of right. spirit. Yes, and Absolutely. it's and it's very often very surprising to find out who comes through for each person. That's right. And um, there can be two people in the same family. And I remember one time, um, the the father came through for one daughter, and. She's asking, well, why isn't my mother coming through? I said, I, I'm not in charge of that. <laughs> I don't know. Um, and so the next one was her sister. Lo and behold, her mother came through. <laughs> her mother came through, and she was dressed in um, a dress that had those old-fashioned high, oh, what are they called? Shoulder what? pads? Shoulder pads. <laughs> And and she says she says my sister and I just went shopping before we came here, and we were uh, looking at these uh, dresses in an old place, an uh, older place, a uh, used place, and she said, "Isn't that just mother?" <laughs> and, she, and it was those shoulder pads that and it were came, the they're the key. Through. So yeah. you never know. Here I'm thinking, I thought they were like. Weird bulges or what's her sh deformed shoulders? Yeah, you know? <laughs> I don't know. And she right immediately recognized. Because some of this stuff doesn't make any sense to us. It's not no. they're not our people or they're not our situations. No. And and so we do our best to convey the information that spirit yeah, offers. Have to convey the information, and they have to know and whether it's it's their appropriate. private joke or whatever. <laughs> it's their I'll tell you another one. Okay. Um. This this one. It might have been the fa that person's father. Anyway, it was somebody's father. I can't separate. We forget. Yeah. <laughs> but um, this one man came through, and he had this huge mass of hair. Oh. And uh, she said, oh, that's my, my dad. He, that's his pompadour. That's his pompadour. Yeah. And then, <laughs> so it's like, you, you think, why is his head big there? Right. You know, because... It's unusual. It's an unusual. And then it turns out it's just the identifying characteristic it's that you needed to, to that say. She and needed they, that they can convey to her right. the way he was when he was here. And and that's an important thing to know because as mediums, someday I think I'll put this in my book. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, one of the things that I specialize in doing is connecting with the essence of of a spirit. Uh, so what I do is I tune into their particular energy signature. We all have mm -hmm. our own unique energy signature. That's right. And that is kind of like our fingerprint, and it's unique to us, and uh, it vibrates at a certain vibrational frequency. It resonates, and when uh, the way I describe this is that I raise my vibration as a medium. Um, they kind of lower theirs because they don't have the dense physical material. And then we meet uh, on the right radio station, on uh, tuned to the right <laughs> dial, if you right. will. Blog. <laughs> right. Well, however that works. And uh, then that's where the conversation can happen. Mm -hmm. And so that's why it helps if the medium is in the most pure space they can be, uh, raising that, that vibration of being in the highest and best good, so that they can purely pass along those things, those mm -hmm. uh, identifying characteristics, that energy signature that's unique. That energy signature really seems to be created from the soul. Plan. Yes. Yeah. So um, uh, when a person goes through life, they always have that with them. And I have um, read in some places where people are trying to understand everything about themselves from birth. Mm -hmm their earliest memory, you try to find your earliest memory, because that memory will contain a lot of that soul energy in it. Mm -hmm. Whether it was a good energy or bad energy, or even the reaction. Um, and if you go back and remember that one, sometimes you'll remember one even even before that. Before that. Yes. And uh, I can't remember what book it was in, but anyway, 
it was like there were a lot of um, regressions having to do with going back to the birth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's that energy that you can, if you can remember it and know that it, even though it exists, most people don't even know it exists. Yeah. And then know it exists and that you are such a unique person. Yes. There are no two people that have that exact reason for coming into this life. I mean, look at twins. They're, they're not the same. Even That's if they're right. so so called identical, right. <laughs> they're they're unique in, in in of themselves their own soul identity. I had the advantage of having twins uh, grow up next door to me. They were identical. Yes. N even their own mother had difficulty telling them apart. Right. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> they they, they were, were replicas. They were true replicas of each other, and. I never had a problem telling them apart. I knew this one is Margie, this one's Maddie, you know. Yeah, it's like, it, and their personalities were very different. And and that's how it can be. It can, um, the uniqueness uh, evolves mm -hmm. with that soul and certain mm -hmm. things are cultivated um, mm -hmm. with, with their manifesting of their free will. Yes. That's an important part of it. And I, I do think that it's something that as we evolve in our own spiritual development, we understand more and more. I think so. But, and, but the, uh, one of the wonderful things was the fact that even though they were dressed identically, right, because to take advantage of the idea, they yeah. are identical. Oh, right? look, twins! <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> even though you dress them, you do everything the same. You have the same mother, father. Everything in their environment is the same. Mm -hmm. Very different. Yes. Very different on the inside. Yeah, one gets triggered in, in yeah. one versus yeah. the other. So I don't know what triggers that, but it's it was fascinating for me, even as a very young person. They mm -hmm. were maybe two years younger than I was, so I saw them from birth. Yes, you know, so. so their progression with them. Yeah. So but nice. even uh, children born to the uh, same parents, you, know, you have to raise those children differently. They have mm -hmm. different spiritual parenting needs That's right. that evolve with, with all of that. And, and so as mediums, we're connecting with those that have passed over. And mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times uh, with my clients and my students, I'm explaining how they can tune into that vibrational frequency. And there are different techniques for that, mm -hmm. but also tuning in uh, the the idea that our loved ones in the spirit are tuning into us as well. They, are. they can find us wherever we go. <laughs> they just you know it's faster than thought. Love the speed of love, right? That's right. It's faster than thought, and so all they have to do is tune in, and they they can be there. That's right. And it's a phone call. A thought of them is a phone call. A thought of them is like a phone call. It, yeah. It's a recognition that they've just entered the room. Mm -hmm. A lot of times if you're busy doing something, you know, uh, you're doing something mundane or you're trying to work on a project of some sort, all of a sudden you find yourself thinking of your loved one in spirit and it's just like they've come into the room and they're, in, they're derailing your thought train. And they've come to say hello and maybe weigh in. Yeah. As if they had been, we're here on the earth plane, they entered the room. And we get interrupted in those ways. <laughs> so. And you know, what happens, sometimes you'll be thinking thoughts and you will recognize that's either a phrase that my mother said to me. Yes, yes. And you'll say, I'm not sure I want that thought. Yeah, so you may have to say. So you have choices then of what you tune into. But it's nice that you were able to get that thought so that you could clean whatever was there. True. It might have been a negative thing. True. It might have been a positive thing. Mm -hmm. But it's a negative thing sometimes because uh, mothers are required <laughs> by some kind of cultural thing to <laughs> reprimand their children, right? Discipline, <laughs> discipline. There, there is uh, discipline is not necessarily. It's not negative. Of, it's about being negative, I, no, I think that like, there's a respect thing that yes. happens for, between a parent and a child, but yes. more, you know, say thank you or say yeah. You know, be, there are some all things. those things that parents teach. There's a lot of training involved, yes. <laughs> and, and sometimes as a child you don't want to 
say anything to a stranger. You that's know. right. That's true. So it's like so. There's so many different subtleties yeah. about the relationship, not only that you had while the parent was alive, but the one you're having after they pass. Yeah. You're still having the relationship. You still have a relationship. Yeah. And but you you can pick and choose how you develop a relationship oh. if you want to be on that particular vibrational frequency. I uh, I've yes. had it happen where. Um, let's say a client's parents were had an unharmonious relationship. They don't stay married on the other side, and they're not vibrating at the same frequency. So mm -hmm. they don't spend a lot of time together, and they've moved on from things. And then other people ha had amazing marriages, and uh, of you know that essence of true love, and that continues on. Mm -hmm. They're on a, the, a similar vibration of frequency. So the people can find each other on the other side. Mm -hmm. uh, by tuning to that vibrational frequency as well. That's right. They both desire that communication and that reunion, and, and it definitely happens. And so it's something that ha that happens here on the earth plane, happens in spirit plane, happens mm -hmm. between the dimensions as well, uh, happens here on the earth plane, uh, sometimes between mothers and daughters, or, <laughs> or people who uh, have... Um, like a an ESP tele, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's it's the the idea of tuning into someone's vibrational frequency, their energy signature, and you can speak to them mm -hmm. sometimes. So That's right. Even if they haven't sure. passed, yeah, even if they have the past, is what they I'm saying. They don't have to be passed in order for you to have uh, a thought connection. Yes. Yeah. And, and a heart. And you can know connection. that someone's come into your aura. Let's say it's a spirit contact happening. You can recognize their energy signature that they've they've come into your aura space, and it alerts you. It's your spiritual antenna that tells you so and so is in the room with you. Mm -hmm. Just like here on the earth plane, if you had your eyes closed, you may be able to, with great accuracy, tell who has entered the room. Not by using any of your other senses. That's right. But your energy senses of all of us. Mm -hmm. So it's exciting what it can is. happen when you understand about the energy signature. Yeah, so it's not just for what we call mediumship or yes. um, our development, our conscious of our consciousness is for the use here on this plane now. Yes, yes. It doesn't have to be when we get over there. It doesn't have to be only when we're trying to communicate with someone on the other side. It happens when we're trying to communicate here. That's uh, <laughs> you know, absolutely right. With the people in the same room. Yes. <laughs> you know, so, or how about the people who are listening? How about the we're not forgetting listening? anyone? <laughs> <laughs> you're all part of this. We know well. you're there. We know you're there. <laughs> so, and that's the wonderful part about this. What you're doing. Yes. Yeah. I have to say this about Willa. She has always had this ability to do interviews with people. <laughs> And I'm going to embarrass her, but, you know, that's what I'm supposed to do, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, so she, she, we would have guests, and uh, especially this one fellow uh, from France. He, he was oh, yes, she, yes, yes, yes <laughs> I remember him. Yeah, and it was just delightful. She interviewed him about France, about what he does, <laughs> about everything, I said, She's uncanny. She's almost like somebody on TV, right? Oh. <laughs> so I was like, moms, you know, they're just so proud. Yes, okay. yes, yes. <laughs> well, I had a lot of fun with the, having conversations with adults yeah. about those things and mm -hmm. learning. I, I have a questing mind. Yes, she does. She always uh, has. Makes me want to read. <laughs> makes me want to have those kind of conversations that so, go beyond just surface things. It doesn't surprise me what you're doing. No. <laughs> But it helps to have had the parents that that I, that I have because they they've helped to uh, cultivate those things. You know, I mm -hmm. tell people I I grew up in a spiritual garden in many ways. Not that I didn't have difficulties. Mm -hmm. uh, not that I didn't have stumblings. So I'm not perfect. <laughs> but but uh, you know, it's nice to that I have have had parents that have, have recognized the importance of the soul. Mm -hmm. and about vibrational frequency, especially because I am so sensitive that if someone was angry with me, I, I felt it not just in, 
in that moment, but days, weeks, sometimes years later. Yes. So I'm very much a, a person that it, it, it reverberates strongly. In. Yes. And I, you know, I just want to mention quickly, I mean, this may be off the subject, but when you do have an agitation, yes. like you're angry, and you have an agitation, that is a signal. So we need to re recognize our own anger as a signal of something that we're working on. Mm -hmm. And it's actually like a, a cloud that's around us. And it's, it can prevent certain things from going forward until you work with it. True, that's so, part of the spiritual homework. And it, and it comes through as that agitation, day mm -hmm. and night. Mm -hmm. And it's like a cloud around you. So mm -hmm. um, it's, it's an opportunity, it's a signal. Okay, that is like a signal that there's something I need to pray about, there's something I need to forgive, there's something uh, I need to clean so that my future, I have a painting called... Uh, Cleaning the foreseeable future. Oh yes, yeah. yes, she does. And and <laughs> and when it came through, it's a whole big, huge painting. Yeah. And when it came through, I couldn't figure out what it was. And then I realized this, um, what looks like to me like a maybe a shaman or something. He was rolling up the energy mm. to clean it. Yes. And um, so he was cleaning. Everybody has a foreseeable future. He's like, what I want to be when I grow up, mm -hmm. uh, what I want to accomplish in this lifetime, Yes. what, uh, who I'd like to find, like my mate or my um, purpose or anything. Yes. But all of those things have little blocks that come up. Mm -hmm. Everything mm -hmm. does. And so if you can clean the blocks, the future unfolds. True. And you can really ask God to help you with that. Yes. You know, you can ask a higher consciousness, whatever you want to call it. You can ask that highest and best. Some people say highest and best. Highest and best. The highest and best to help you to clean the energy you do have mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that maybe dozes through too fast or that doesn't doze through fast enough, you know, to, to become sensitive to how to proceed to the next step mm -hmm. and to work at it yes it just doesn't get totally handed you know and i was thinking this morning about i don't know i get real thankful about eating <laughs> <laughs> we like food we like food but it, like when i have a cup of coffee or when i i get oh i just feel so grateful but when i was young when i was born we were in the second world war mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I remember when, if you didn't like food, mm -hmm. uh, your father or mother would say, well, think about people who are starving somewhere. And usually it was China or Africa or something like right. that, where we knew that people were... Yeah. But I didn't realize that our family didn't have that much. You know what ah. I mean? They never said that. Um, and my aunt, one day, she said, I don't know how your mother did it, fed her kids on what little she had. And I said, I didn't know that. But then, just recently, um, my brothers found in my mom's possessions um, a little um, piece of paper that was something where you could get food for, for Bonnie. Oh. Because all the food was rationed during the Second World War. Right. We were all fighting the war. Everybody here in the United States was fighting the war. Yes. So we were all rationed on what food we could get. We couldn't True. buy it, no matter how much money you had. Right. You had to have a slip of paper that qualified you to get that food for a certain person. Right. You know, we don't know those things because we haven't been in that kind of a war. Yeah. And that hasn't been a reality so for us. So we were all fighting that war. It's like, oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot that has to happen and on our home And our parents turf. were pretty worried, you know. Mm -hmm. How are we going to um, get enough food for the family? For them. Absolutely. Yeah. So and the, that's, that's part, of, part of history in a family yeah, right. sense. What was happening here? And you couldn't get wool, for instance. Because that had to go for the troops. Mm -hmm. you, there's just 
oh my, they yeah. had lots of things that were going on that I didn't really know. Yeah. <laughs> you know what the, I, mean? the, I was just a baby. You know? Right. They, and they didn't advertise like, that. No, you. no, no. And they ne my mother like never said. Or anything like that. My mother never used the word that we were poor. Right. So she, I think she was probably trying to hold the consciousness that, that yeah. she wasn't. That That's they right. Weren't. She was holding and the consciousness that we were all going to succeed in some way. Yes. Yes. And um, I was thinking about that too. When we're as mothers, because Mother's Day is coming up. Yeah, that's another reason why I chose to have my mother on today. When your baby is born and the first time you see your baby, there is this incredible energy all around. It's like an angel. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember the first time that I saw my little brother. Oh, and yes. I wanted to name him Angel, right? Because <laughs> all I could see was that he was an angel. There was a glow, a just it was a kind of a white, crystalline, soft, not not hard like a crystal, but right. It was a crystalline glow all around him, and every baby that a mother has has that glow, and that's what we try to preserve for the rest of their lives. Mm -hmm. That is what I call the seal. The seal. That's what's called the seal. I call. We're it, going to explain a little bit more about that too. I call that the seal. And it is the identity that you're born with. Mm -hmm. And we as mothers have been given this incredible gift and also responsibility yeah. of keeping that particular seal intact. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. I just think it's a wonderful gift. It is a wonderful gift. It's a wonderful gift. So. You know, and as a as a child, having experienced uh, in in full throttle mother motherhood myself, <laughs> and having experienced uh, the pre joys of pregnancy, I I can confirm that if you can feel the the flesh is growing and the spirit essences are merging, mm -hmm. and there is a, a great responsibility and a a great sense of of mm -hmm. protecting that energy that comes That's along right. with it. Before they even come out, that's right. <laughs> because they've already come down the chute, as it were, <laughs> uh, energetically. And so there's that energy signature that's unique to them. That's right. and, and during pregnancy, a lot of mothers have awareness. I know myself, I, I knew a uh, moment of conception. Uh, I, I knew exactly when, when that energy entered. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's because I'm I'm sensitive to spirit, right? You know, yeah. probably also that I'm a medium that I was able to discern the exact moment of those things, and it it helped me to be very conscious of the the love to share with them, the intention it's of amazing. that. It's amazing. It's an amazing gift that mothers have, and I have to say, no matter who the mother is, there is that um, connection with their child mm -hmm. you know and um that urge to nurture yes and and make that grow and stay with them that ability that ability and and we do have people who are our soulmates that are part of the soul same soul group and that can happen within families that can happen outside of families mm -hmm. uh, sometimes people recognize another person's kinship in that way it's like they recognize yes the, the the seal of their soul absolutely right and their energy mm -hmm. signature that's unique to them but also contains energy of that particular soul group mm -hmm. and they're of that vibrational frequency and so there's a recognition that happens a kinship of souls that happens when you meet them that's so right. some people really connect uh, very strongly with their grandmothers or a particular friend or you know whoever it is and they it's you just have that moment of knowing and it can happen with people who don't even speak the same language. True. <laughs> it can happen between humans and animals. That's right. Yes. And they don't not speak in the same language. <laughs> you know, that's something that's they uh, you know, the animal communication that can mm -hmm. come into play as that's well, right. the recognition of that vibrational frequency. I, I wanted to to mention that uh, there is a difference between the vibrational frequency of angels, mm -hmm. spirit guides, humans in spirit, pets in spirit. They all mm -hmm. have a different vibrational mm -hmm. frequency. For me, uh, that's something that I make uh, distinctions between. Mm -hmm. 
myself. Uh, mm -hmm. Some people don't make distinctions of those, but mm -hmm. other people, they they like that. But we do all have the angelic. We because of, we have connection with, with the different planes of existence. Mm -hmm. Yes, we we have absolute energy. And I do believe in a dimensions. guardian angel that's with us. Yes, because I used that when I went to school. <laughs> <laughs> Angels help so much. I'm, I only sat on half my seat, so the angel had room. <laughs> but it's like you're aware of that. Yes. You know, and so there is an angel with presence with everybody mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. And thank God for that because um, mothers can't do it all. That's right. Yeah. And they can't be there every moment. And, and so we, as a mother, we, we have to trust mm -hmm. in, in their our journey. Children. Yeah with that ongoing love and love protection and, yeah. and know that the angels are, are looking after them and that they have their own life path and things to learn mm -hmm. along the way. Yes. And their, their energy signature through spiritual natural law, mm -hmm. right? Because that's a whole other level to how an energy signature relates with the world. Yes. This is vast, folks. This it is vast. Yeah, it's very vast. <laughs> For those of you who are just tuning in, uh, this is Wednesdays with Will. You're listening to Lily Dale Radio. And I have as my guest today my mother, Bonnie White. And she's a registered Lily Dale medium and a spirit artist. And we're talking about the energy signature of spirit. Uh, it's such an important concept that we it wanted is, to make yeah. sure we, we shared Very with all of so. you. And, yeah. and so, yes. there's another aspect of the idea of a person's spirit. Okay. And that is, um, who was it? I was reading a book by uh, Jeffries or Se Jeffers, I think. I don't know okay. If I, name. I have trouble remembering the author's name, and it's terrible because I'm not I would very like good to give credit. Myself, yeah. I would like to give credit, but um, he was talking about when you do have trouble with, say, a neighbor. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's say you have trouble with a neighbor of some kind. Yes. Who knows what it could be? Um, <laughs> and uh, you either don't get along or you think they don't like you or I don't know who knows all right he's saying that the way to go about that is never talk to the person what interesting yes. Ooh, oh don't. I know why I know why okay go ahead talk only to the person's spirit yes yes <laughs> I know oh the answer <laughs> because everyone has that spirit but they're not all aware of it and when you talk to that other person's spirit, guess where you are? You're in your spirit. Yes. You want and your soul to talk with their soul. There, so And you don't ever tell them, I talked with no, your I'm soul. No, I'm talking to your spirit now. No, no you never no, say no. that. You have to do... So a lot of times things have to happen on subtle vibrational levels because you, you just, can't talk to someone's conscious awareness. It, you just talk to their spirit. Well, guess what? You can't talk to their spirit unless you are in a spiritual spot. Yes. So, so, you, so is, there you go. You can use uh, the divine... God is a, as an intermediary with all of this. Yes. Because you're giving it over to God in that sense. Yeah. Uh, of these troubles that may beset Pretty you. Pretty soon the faults disappear. This ah. is what he was saying. What happens is the things that you the things that you find fault with in another another the neighbor. Mm -hmm. Love mm -hmm. your neighbor as yourself. That's the soul <laughs> stuff coming through. Right. 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 Um, the his faults disappear. Yeah. His or her faults. It's true. And then, all of a sudden, your neighbor starts acting like the one you see when you're talking to him. Yes. And it's like... You finally see profound. their soul in their eyes. So that is so profound. I mean... It's like, I it is. I didn't think of because it. you're no, tuning no. into their soul. You're turning, tuning into their energy signature right. rather than their conscious human body self yeah. and the moods and the modes that people can get but into. But one has expectations and um, thing, does things and doesn't like the way you do things or vice versa. That one is not of the soul. And so the energy signature, tuning into that, to that soul, is very important. And it increases the energy, their soul loves it. It increases the energy of the connection for that through the mind and heart. Mm -hmm. Because when the mind is conscious of the soul and the heart responds, oh, then you have 
beauty. And and that's why the uh, understanding of the sacred connection for yourself is very important. Mm -hmm. And the cultivation of that spiritual unfoldment. And the understanding of your own unique energy signature. That's right. And how it relates to God and how it relates mm -hmm. to others and how it relates to the world. Mm -hmm. So knowing your own unique energy signature helps you to be more aware of where you're placing your energy and how you may be forcing your energy forward. That's right. Wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> we and every now and then we have to stop and figure, oh, we're here. <laughs> oh, we're here. Yeah, yeah we're souls in, inside of a, a human body. That's but right. I'll tell you, the physical earth plane is an amazing, incredible place. The hugs you feel here are mm -hmm. just amazing. Yeah. The sensual experiences, the tactile experiences, the way color is. That's right. And you the know. beauty. The beauty of now compared to last week. <laughs> I mean, the, the trees are blooming. Oh, yes. Yes. The, the way things have evolved. And they had time. only potential yeah. a week ago. <laughs> so... You know, potential is a huge thing. Yeah. So that's another thing. Your children are full of potential. Yes, they are. Full of potential. And, um, and it's just wonderful, even though they're not blooming yet. Yeah, some people are late bloomers. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and and some people, is they'll say, oh, I, I can't believe my dad's coming in. Uh, it's yeah. because their dad's had their comeuppance or, you know, that's whatever right. it was. <laughs> they had that their difference of opinion. Yes. They, they've recognized uh, their, about their soul finally. And so mm -hmm. it, they'll get it sometime. It's not about converting anyone. They'll come to it in their own time. That's right. And spirit works very strongly with, mm -hmm. with them. For the, that understanding to occur, right. uh, and so once once they're understanding and, and in that harmonious space, uh, many many uh, advancements can occur within a soul. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> and it, and 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 you can sometimes provide that surround that they need. It's yeah. like um, water of life. Watering the plant, um, mm -hmm. suddenly, them. yeah, uh, just, just to, but if you attack them and become aggressive, sometimes people think that's the only way that works. Mm -hmm. And maybe it is sometimes, but certain it's people like, do need f more firmness than others. <laughs> but, but they still need the other. And being loving and firming, yeah. firm, loving yeah. and firm at loving the same time. Firm. So how helps when you're dealing with difficult people. Yes. And uh, it's an understanding of that for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, I do see we we have a caller. So I want to see... Um, oh, we don't have too much time left. Uh, mm -hmm. So if anybody does want to call in to take part in the discussion of the energy signature of spirit, uh, feel free. Uh, I'm going to take caller ending in 6975. And oh, the guest call in number before I forget to give it to you again is 818 739 8818. Again, 818 739 8818. And the caller I'm going to take ends in 6975. Again, 6975. Hello. Hello, and welcome to the show. Hello? Hey, I was just are y'all doing reading? Oh, <laughs> We're, we're, we're talking about the energy signature of spirit today and about vibrational frequency. Oh. Have you been listening to the show? Yeah, some of it. Okay, some of it. <laughs> so uh, have you recognized different people's energy signatures around you? Like the way, the uniqueness of people's souls? Not really. Well, it's something that you can cultivate, and mm -hmm. hopefully you've been listening to the show mm -hmm. and recognizing the importance of, of all of that and how it unfolds for people so that you, you can find more peace in your particular relationships and, and life. And have you been conscious of mm -hmm. cultivating your own connection with God and your soul? That's what I've been working on. Good. Time yeah. to work on. Yes. Mm -hmm. And and how how have you noticed that it's been a few minutes in a day? 
Yes. I, I've noticed for myself that if, if time is rushing by too fast, that even if I just take a moment to breathe mm -hmm. and reconnect with that inner self, with that God space within, uh -huh. that it helps me get through whatever crisis might be in front of me. Yeah, deep breath. Deep breath. Breath connects us with life. It's one of the first things that we experience uh, when we're born, even. Yeah. When we, when we come out, that, that focus on life in that way. And so do you also take some time to pray? Yes. Yeah, I take time to pray. Excellent. Because mm -hmm. that's another I way. <laughs> I know. <laughs> we all do. We we're all with have you. We're with you. <laughs> We all do. Yeah. And and have you noticed how your soul relates to other people's soul? Like, are, are you aware of seeing the God within others? Yeah, and I'm very, what's the word, like empathic. Oh, great. Wow. And I took on a lot of people's energy, mm -hmm. and it drained me of my own energy. Please yes. Mm -hmm. So I'm just trying to rebuild, kind of restore it. Get myself on the right track. Yes. So when you uh, find yourself in empathy with another person, instead of taking it on yourself, sometimes you can say, oh, this is an opportunity for me to help that person give that those hardships and those struggles to a higher energy. Yes. And then, and then that way you won't take it on yourself but you can be the conduit to take it to the higher force. Because eventually, if you take it on yourself, you still have to give it to God. Yeah, no, but at, to at some point in the process, you'll have to give whatever is occurring with someone else to God. Mm -hmm. So it's best to do it early on, is <laughs> what I've yeah. noticed. And that uh, because I also am uh, clairsentient, where I feel things very deeply like you do, I have had to be very conscious of, of not taking other people's things on board mm -hmm. and not being a sponge to it all. So I look at those, like when I have a sense about what's occurring with a person, uh, especially because as a medium I connect with people who have passed over and, and I feel what they felt like before they passed and it's not always pleasant. I have to tell myself and tell my guides that I'm working with that I only want it for like two to three seconds at the most, just enough to understand the information, and then I move on. So mm -hmm. there are signposts along the way what's going on. So keep working with it. Like as soon as you get a piece of information, say, okay, thank you, that's good information to know, and now what's the next piece of what I need to know so that you don't linger in it physically or emotionally. And then it won't drain you. And then it won't drain you. That's You'll true. You'll see, oh, oh, this person needs this and I can help. You don't even have to tell them you're doing it. Just say, okay, I give this to my guides to take to a higher consciousness and clean and give it back to the other person when it's clean. Because obviously yeah. the things that and that's part of that cleaning process yes because um it's like they're getting rid of their stuff that they need to get rid of mm -hmm. but they don't know how to get it to a higher the higher source but you do you do what is your name your first name takira 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 okay takira my yeah. birthday is today oh happy that's birthday oh, oh nice. it, it's on mother's yeah, day thanks. perfect oh nice yeah. And and so with all of this, know that you don't have to take other people's things on. In fact, uh, there's a difference between spiritual healing and magnetic healing. Spiritual healing is using the energy of the divine and courses through you to help other people. But magnetic healing is when you try to use your own energy to heal a person or situation. And it can be very depleting that way. Yes. And so as you learn to buffer energy with people... And you will. You will learn how to do this successfully. Mm -hmm. uh, it just takes some time to learn how to buffer that. You, you'll start to recognize where someone is and be able to move yourself on so you, that you don't hold them in your mind or hold that on, a, mm -hmm. in, on VCR loop within you at all. Like, for instance, sometimes someone you'll find is um, ill. And instead of 
keeping all oh, that person sick, all oh, that person sick, all mm -hmm. oh, that person sick. You can give it to uh, your higher consciousness and say, I can visualize this person getting well. Mm -hmm. So that they don't, it doesn't keep them in there either. Right. You know, but you know we we can help people so much, but the rest is theirs. You've already understood it, and you already understand that one, don't you? <laughs> that you can only help people to a certain degree, and the rest is theirs to do. Correct? Yes. Yes. So I think that's going to be very good for you to keep like acknowledging. Now I have to use more time to like help myself because I've been doing it for so long. Yes. And other Yes, yes. So that's why you want to, as much as you can, build something into the routine of your day to give you some time or solitude around, away from other people and their thoughts and their energy. Not to be a hermit, but to, to kind of reset yourself so that when you are around people, you can be 100%. And, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's good that you recognize that you've pushed yourself a little too far and now you can back that up. That's right. And you don't have to tell them, I realize I've been doing everything for you and I'm... <laughs> you don't have to be confrontive with them with that, but you can wean them from you. <laughs> Weaning is important. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, well, I'm so... I'm trying to learn how to balance everything. Oh, you are very welcome. I Thanks appreciate calling. you calling in today. And happy birthday. Happy, happy. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a common issue with empaths, with people who are sensitive. This uh, happens quite a lot, yes. unfortunately. And well, yeah, we have, to learn, we have to learn that we are not the, the one that can heal them. It's the higher consciousness. We can assist, we and can assist it's, that it's their journey. And, you know, just, uh, I know we need to wrap up, but when it comes to vibrational frequency, sometimes we, as sensitives, can get so wrapped up in another person's vibrational frequency that it does drag us down. And that's why you need to have a real strong sense of what's your energy. This is me, you know, and then what someone else is, what your own unique energy signature is. So that you can always go back to that which is your soul mm -hmm. and always go back to that which is your your higher self right so that when you are dealing with other people's vibrational frequencies you're not pulled off kilter so much and it's good if you, you do balance so mm -hmm. i'm glad she called in and we were able too. to talk about that i am too thanks great. Kira. <laughs> uh, i know that we're uh, at the end of our show but i i wanted to let people know that next week uh, Wednesday, because my show is on Wednesdays at 10 a.m., I will be having David Guasiman on, and we're going to be talking about Harry Potter and spiritualism. <laughs> and it's going to be hilarious. It's going to be a great show. Um, so we'll talk about Harry Potter. It's, you know, the famous book, the book series and the movie series, and how, how things uh, relate or don't relate to spiritualism. And uh, for those of you who are interested in, in knowing more about what my mother is up to or what she offers, you can go to her website at bonspirit.com, B-O-N-N-S-P-I-R-I-T.com. Mm -hmm. And I, I know for myself, it's willowwhite.com. And uh, at the end of May, I will be the featured medium at the City of Light Spiritualist Church here in Lilydale. So if... If you're in town that, that evening, they do an evening service. You can find more about that on my website. And my mother and father are going to be on at the end of June, June 24th, at the, at the same church, City of Light. And so there are opportunities to see us. And then in the summertime, I know you'll be doing some things. We, yes. We both have speaking in July and August and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. So uh, you could certainly find us here in the summertime as well. So thank you everyone for tuning in today to Wednesdays with Willa. Thank you so much for being on the show today, Mom. Oh, it was a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, enjoy what you learn about yourself and your own energetic signature and how it relates to other people. Have a beautiful and happy Wednesday, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.